Scenic World in Australia is one of the most unique amusement parks in the world, and that's honestly because it doesn't really feel like one. Coaster enthusiasts know of this place for being home to the infamous and abandoned Orphan Rocker roller coaster. But most people know this park for its stunning location in the heart of the Blue Mountains. The attractions here offer some of the best views of any ride on the planet. So in this video, I will review Scenic World and explain why that is an extremely fitting name. Jameson Valley was once home to an active coal mine, and an inclined railway was used to transport workers and supplies. Once the mine closed in 1945, the Hammond family converted the former Incline Railway into a tourist attraction. This was the start of Scenic World, and over time, a few additional experiences were added. But the primary reason you want to visit this park has never changed. You come here for the view. You enter the park on the top level, which sits over 650 feet or 200 meters above the valley. Down below, you have lush rainforests. Then in the distance, you have the famous Blue Mountains, the Three Sisters Rock Formation, and Katoomba Falls. The sights are fit for a postcard. While this review will focus primarily on what Scenic World has to offer, it is worth noting there are all sorts of observation platforms and hiking trails in the nearby area. There is more than enough to fill a day if you love nature. These are free to access. Scenic World, by contrast, is not free. It will cost you roughly 50 to 60 Australian dollars per person to enter the park. This ticket includes unlimited access to the park's three rides and all the walking trails. I believe there used to be single ride tickets, but that appears to have been discontinued some time ago. If you buy your ticket in advance, you can skip the queue to enter, but you will need to specify your arrival time. This is one of the few parks still doing timed entry, but there appear to be plenty of time slots available even the day of, and there was no shortage of walk-up availability. You just have to wait in a line to get your ticket if you showed up in person. That also ties into the next bit of information, getting there. Scenic World is located in Katoomba, roughly 100 kilometers west of Sydney. This is roughly a one and a half hour journey by car, and there's a free parking garage available if you have a car. Many people who visit are tourists from Sydney without a car. There are several Blue Mountains day trip excursions from Sydney that include transportation, Scenic World, and a few other sightseeing attractions. We looked into this, but we decided against it for two reasons. Cost and convenience. These day tours typically cost over 200 Australian dollars. We also didn't like how regimented they were. Many seem to give you about an hour tops at Scenic World. That's enough time to do each attraction once, but it does not give you enough time to slow down and really soak everything in. For reference, we spent roughly four hours at Scenic World. So can you get there by public transit? Yes, and it's rather easy. You can catch a train from downtown Sydney to Katoomba Station. One way costs seven to eight dollars. If you use an Opal card, which is the primary card for transportation around Sydney, the daily limit is $16.80 on weekdays and $8.40 on weekends. Keep this in mind for the next part. From Katoomba Station, Scenic World is roughly a 40 minute walk, or you can use a bus. When you buy a Scenic World ticket online, they try to sell you on a ticket for the Blue Mountain Bus. This is an extra $40 on top of park admission. Do not buy this. First off, it only runs from 8.40am until 5.15pm. That is it. Second, it only runs once per hour. So if you miss the bus, you'll be waiting a while for the next one. Compare that to what we did. We used the 686 bus. This is the local city bus servicing all of Katoomba, and guess what? It is included on the Opal network. So if you already hit your daily limit using the train to go to and from Sydney, this bus becomes free. And even if you haven't hit your limit yet, it's roughly $1 to $2 per ride depending which stop you load and exit from. To top it all off, these buses have far more convenient times and availability. They start running by 8.55 a.m. at the latest and run until at least 8 p.m. On weekdays, buses come every half hour. Then weekends, buses come every 10 minutes. And this line takes you to pretty much any of the same places the Blue Mountain Bus does. Now I need to talk about this park setup. It's pretty weird, but that goes back to its location. The main entrance is located roughly 65 stories above a valley. This building includes a gift shop, lookout points, a restaurant, bathrooms, and entrances to the three rides. You have the Scenic Skyway, the Scenic Railway, and the Scenic Cableway. 
All three of these attractions take you away from this entrance building. The Scenic Skyway takes you across the valley to a side entrance for Scenic World. Over here, you are near the walking trails for Katoomba Falls and Echo Point. The Scenic Railway and Scenic Cableway transport you down to and up from Jameson Valley. Down in the valley, you can see the old mine and you have a series of walking trails. But there are three key things you need to know if you go down there. First, there are no facilities down there. That includes restaurants and more importantly, bathrooms. You only have those in the main building on the top level. Now I know how my guests felt in Roller Coaster Tycoon why I didn't build a bathroom in certain areas of the park. Second, while several of the walking trails are part of Scenic World, others are not. These are marked by big gates that take you outside of Scenic World. You can come and go from these gates as long as Scenic World is open. Third, and most importantly, pay very close attention to this park's operating hours, and more specifically, when the last rides are out of the valley. You do not want to get stuck down there. Staff members warn you about this when you get to the park, and every time you depart from an attraction. Plus, the park has several signs warning you about this on the lower level. On the day I visited, the last rides occurred 10 minutes to closing time. But do you really want to cut it that close? Everything was a one cycle wait or less when we visited, but I have heard you may have to wait a few cycles if the park is busy during a holiday. Now let's talk about the attractions. The Scenic Railway is my personal favorite. This is advertised as the world's steepest incline railway. This is a half-truth. It is the world's steepest incline lift using a winch system, however, there is a steeper funicular in Switzerland. That being said, this ride is super steep. It has a max angle descent of 52 degrees, and it gets even more extreme. Each seat is a button off to the side that lets you adjust the pitch of the seat. You can move back 8 degrees for a more relaxing ride, or you can move 12 degrees forwards for the cliffhanger experience like we did. With no restraints, it was pretty darn freaky. Wait an extra cycle for the very front if possible. It is worth it. It is one of the most unnerving views of any attraction. While I've been on steeper coasters, you move down those drops freely. It feels unnatural traveling down the track at a controlled rate at this angle. The track looks like it just disappears, especially because it passes through a few caves. I think the other two rides offer more scenic views, but this was my personal favorite because of the psychological aspect, and the views were pretty good too in the bits when the trees open up. This one is better experienced riding down the valley, but going up is fun too. The scenic cableway is a gondola going up and down the valley. For the best view, you want to be at the front of the gondola staring down at the valley, or off on the side looking towards the three sisters. This is to your right if you board at the lower level, or to your left if you board from the top. This ride offers a stunning vista of the Blue Mountains. The experience was equally as fun going up and down for me. The scenic skyway travels across the valley. One side offers comparable views to the cableway as you look over the vast mountain range. The other side offers an incredible view of Katoomba Falls as you pass directly over it. Then the center of the gondola has a glass floor so you can look down 80 stories at the rainforest beneath you. It is such a cool view. I recommend riding this one at least twice to see everything. Then the lower section has these walking trails. Most people are focused exclusively on the rides. Those are the highlights, but these trails are worth checking out if you like nature. The lack of people made them quiet and relaxing. I would say there are about a half hour of trails down there within the park's boundaries. The park has signage down there estimating how long each path will take to complete. From our experience, it often took half the time the park estimated. For the younger ones, there is the Gruffalo Spotters Trail. You download an app on your phone in advance, and then you use augmented reality to spot the characters. It seemed to be popular with kids, but I prefer to focus on nature itself. The one other thing to see down there is remnants from the old coal mine. You have a few viewing ports into the mines themselves, plus some old equipment lying around. Moving back to the top level, there are two final things I want to mention. First, we did not try the restaurant. Since we only spent a half day at the park, we chose to eat at the downtown Katoomba area instead. But I love the seating area overlooking the valley. Second, I need to talk about Orphan Rocker. This roller coaster was designed in-house in the 1980s. The park hired an Australian firm who had never built a roller coaster to erect it. While the layout was completed, it never opened to the public. If you want to see it in action, 
There is some very rare footage from the Roller Coaster Club of Great Britain showing off the ride operating with a lucky rider. This would have been a really cool coaster. While it would have had a modest top speed under 30 miles per hour or 48 kilometers per hour, two things would have made the experience. First, the setting. The ride was surrounded by trees, and then one of the turns took place at the edge of the valley. Second, the rocking. It would have felt like a sit-down suspended coaster similar to Seven Dwarfs Mine Train at the Disney parks, except that ride is not located on the edge of a cliff. While information about this coaster is a bit tricky to come by, it appears Australia was developing AS3533 for amusement rides as the coaster was being built. This required the park to revise the design a few times to be compliant. It sounds like the coaster didn't gain the necessary clearance to open. Eventually the park gave up, leaving the coaster to rot. It's actually pretty jarring to see. Most of Scenic World looks nice, but then you have a rusting coaster passing over the entry plaza. And in other areas, trees have started to grow through the track. In some areas, the track is completely taken apart now. If only this ride had been built by an experienced ride manufacturer, I would love for Vacoma to make a modern day orphan rocker using the Seven Dwarfs ride system, but that's just a pipe dream. So do I recommend Scenic World? If you plan to visit the Blue Mountains, I think this is a must. The views are beautiful, and the three rides there accentuate those sights. If you're a coaster enthusiast, I think this place is worth checking out. It's pretty surreal seeing the legendary orphan rocker in person, and anyone can appreciate the views this park offers. Based on my tastes, I prefer the traditional amusement parks of Australia, but this beats most other observation attractions I've done elsewhere. So those are my thoughts on Scenic World, the unique amusement park in Australia's Blue Mountains. What are your thoughts about this park, whether it be the rides themselves or the overall experience? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.